Salve, anyways, this is a uh, prisoner of the one helm, Steven. Death of Father John, Rex, Maggie running away, uh, Steven Saga number four. This has a lot of death in it, it's kind of like Game of Thrones, when there's like no budget and it's got better writing, it's actually real. But anyways, I'll try to go this as fast as I can. 1979, the death of his grandfather, Steven remembers seeing his grandfather what was basically his deathbed in the game, like this, uh, this red race car, number 18. And like, it had pop-up lights, and when you pulled it back, it would go forward. And then, you know, even there was times he wanted to be a race car driver, so I don't know if that was it. That's like his only memory of his grandfather, and uh, it was weird. His grandfather's birthday was December 5th, and one of Steven's dogs died on uh, January 25th. So it's like really weird, you know what I mean? It's like the same numbers, but like different dates. But uh, the summer of uh, 83 or 84, uh, Steven gets Rex from the pound. Uh, it, it was actually between that or a collie, like this Lassie dog. It's kind of like where the red fern grows, where he ends up getting the hound over the uh, over the collie and everything. If you know that, but there was this one dog, like when you always look at him, it was like Chico, and like they say Chico, the dog's name, and he like jumped like ten feet. So it's like a little dog, but it's like there's no way that dog is going to be in the, you know, no way it could have that. Because I only had like a four foot fence, it pops the fence and stuff. But it was weird. For some reason, Steven decided like he was going to get the dog then. He was always afraid of dogs. So it's good that Rex was like an older dog. He's probably about the same age as Steven when he got him. So Steven got him. He was probably about like seven or eight when Steven got him. You know what I mean? And Steven was around the same age and he was pretty good. You know what I mean? He'd go and get the leash. He'd go for his walks and everything. And everyone liked him. Uh, Steven's dad liked him. Everyone in the family liked him. Steven's dad would sit out on the stoop with him. And, he'd, you know, he'd smoke his cigarettes. And he'd have him on this like white cord and everything. Thing. So that was actually pretty good. Uh, you know, 1984 though, uh, sometime after I got wrecked, so like a year after the having, uh, the death of uh, Steven's grandmother died. She had cancer. They never told her that she had cancer. They opened her up and she had a gallbladder. Like they had the gallbladder removed. And they found that like, there was cancer. And her people, my mom, they never told her that the girl, they never told her she had cancer. She was like living a life with cancer. She had no idea. Wondering why she's not get, be, getting better or covering this and this. And then she died of cancer. And then like everyone's at the house looting the house. Everyone's like trying to get what they could. Like, how, what can I loot? What can I get? What can I get? She used to have these elephants with chains that I kind of like, but, you know, I think I got, like, lamps and some stuff for my mom, like some, you know, some other things and stuff like that. So, then in, um, 1989, death of Rex. Rex dies. He dies around the first heart attack that, uh, Steven's father has. And he had, like, cushions. It's like a type of cancer. When Steven got Rex from the town, he was, um, he had all the people. He'd always, like, so one of them died and then one of them went in the home. So that's how he ended up getting, uh, Rex. So then he goes to North Shore Animal League and he gets this other dog, uh, Maggie, who's like a Beagle Shepherd mix. And that was, um, you know, that, that worked, you know, that didn't work out too well. It's like Maggie would jump the fence and so you have to pull him down the thing. But the thing with Maggie was he was still a bit afraid of dogs. And Maggie had this thing where she wouldn't let you leave. She wouldn't let you leave the house. She wouldn't let you leave the school. She wouldn't let you leave this. She'd start like nipping at you, trying to block you, and there's all this other stuff. And the Beagle Shepherd mix is pretty big. So that was pretty tough. So, um... 1989, the same year, he just gets Maggie. Steven, the dad, Steven's dad's yelling at Maggie. He has him yelling, he has him yelling, he has him yelling. Then there's like an eerie, there's an eerie, there's an eerie, there's an eerie silence. So Steven knows there's something wrong. And then he goes, Steven goes, he walks and he sees his father laying on the couch with his mouth open. His dad's mouth is open, he's not moving. So right there, Steven knows something's wrong. Steven made three phone calls. Steven called for an ambulance, I think. Uh, he doesn't even remember, but he calls for the ambulance, he told him what would happen, he was calm. He even called his cousin, uh, Ray, he called his mom at work, I think she was at Walbaum, was working a job there, she worked two jobs at the time. So, the ambulance comes right around the same time Raymond, who lived like not that far away, but far enough away. But he ran, he ran all the way to the house and he came there just as like the ambulance was there. And, uh, you know, that was pretty much it. He was DOA. They, they pronounced him DOA. But even as he was holding Maggie, uh, they tried to get him to, you know, his heart started, where he's doing like the joys of life thing. He's trying to get the heart started, trying to get the heart started. And Keevan's just standing there holding Maggie. And there was really nothing that you could do. And, you know, Keevan blamed himself for the death of the father and everything. And, you know, we'll get into that, like another thing. But, like, 
you know, Keevan, that was when Keevan realized his feelings didn't matter because they wouldn't send him home from school. He'd missed like two weeks of school. But to make it worse, uh, when people over for the funeral stuff, and Maggie ran into the car, and they shoot it off, and Maggie ran away. So during all the funeral stuff, Maggie runs away. So then Keevan doesn't even have a dog then, you know, because Maggie ran away. And there was the people that never treated his Keevan's father well. It's like, you know, the situation he was in, that he was there and he was never adopted. So it was this person, Helen and Frank, and they, they never treated him well. They always treated him badly. And, you know, so it was just kind of like that. And, um, you know, it was pretty difficult. Keevan only has really one good memory of his father, and that's when they built this thing. They built this boat. You can kind of see this boat's over 40 years old. And that's basically what Keevan built. You know, you can kind of see. He even built that. This boat's over 40 years old. And he even was impressed by like how the father, how he knew how to do that, how he put the things together, and he put the other thing in there, and then he put the mast in there and everything. So Keevan, Keevan was only a couple years old when they made this. But uh, you can see the boat. The boat's over 40 years old. It stood the test of time. Stephen still has his boat, and th that's the only good memory he has of his father. And, uh, you know, uh, this wasn't really easy to talk about, uh, you know what I mean? But you know what? It's over with. I don't have to talk about it ever again. <laughs> and, you know, hopefully it helps somebody. And, uh, you know, remember, when people are cold and when they're dark, PTSD episodes can obsess you.